Hello, my friends. Hello to all of you out there who have interest to listen and to learn and work with the podcast I send out. We're having a new session with You Can Get Over It, How to Comfort, Forgive, and Move On. I'm going to talk about how the devil operates in the realm of the mind and emotions. I want to help you understand how the devil works in the realm of the mind and emotions. What I am about to tell you is simple. But it's also life-changing and revolutionary. If you grab hold of these truths, they can set you free from the devil's lies forever. Let me begin by saying that the devil has no right to operate in your life unless you open a door for him to come in and do his business. And therefore, when you keep wrong attitudes out of your family, of your life, I mean, you make it very difficult for the devil to find an entrance into your family, friendships, relationships, health, finances, ministry, or business. When the devil can't come in the front door, he often seeks a way to get in through the back door. One back door he uses is a hard infect with bitterness, resentment, and unforgiveness. These attitudes create an entrance for Satan to intrude right into the middle of your most vital relationships. And believe me, keeping the devil out of your relationships is far easier than trying to remove him after he's already found his way inside. However, if the devil has already gotten a foothold in any area of your life through these destructive attitudes, I'm here to tell you that you can still walk free. In Ephesians 6, the verses 10 to 18, and write the scriptures down, Paul explicitly tells us how the devil operates. This passage of scripture is extremely important for you to know and understand. I recommend that you read the book Dress It to Kill, which deals expressly with the issues of spiritual warfare and spiritual weaponry. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11, Paul writes, Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the will of the devil. I want you to especially pay attention to the phrase, the wills of the devil. And I can read it from another translation if it may be better for some who is coming in. Let me go there. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wills of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, 
against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. The understanding, the meaning of this phrase will give you insight into the way the devil attempts to operate in a person's life. And for that, your Bible needs to be open. What do I mean by that? Write it somewhere. Wear it with you. Put it in one of your wallets. Or write it, text it down in your devices. That it is a quick find if you need to stand up and put your whole armor of God on. Three other keys New Testament words to understand as well are the words devices, deception, and devil. Once you see how these words relate to each other, I believe a veil will be lifted and the light of revelation will shine in your heart, causing you to understand how the devil tries to operate in most people's life, including your own. And I don't believe that out there will be someone saying, I don't have any problems with that. Everyone gets attacks. Any Christian will be tempted. Any Christian can say some words that's so strong that after it's out there that you will un understand and come to a conclusion that what he's just said are so wrong and this is the back door the back door where the devil can come in and tempt you or you there is a fight with your friends or in your relationship with your spouses all that can be tempted and comes in through the back door and trust me he finds his way in especially in families who are running very well and having beautiful friendships also in churches he is very clever but we need to go on top of that God gave us the tools to fight back to stand firm So stay with me, and I know this is going to be a long session, but you can always pause and put it away and listen to another time. So please bear with me as I take you on a Greek word study you will never forget. The word wells is taken from the word methodos, which is a compound of the words meta and odos. The word meta is a proposition that means with. The word odos is the word for a road. When the words meta and odos are compounded into one word, as in Ephesians 6 verse 11, the new word methodos literally means with a road. You've probably already figured out that the word methodos is where we get the word method. Some translations actually translate that word methodos in Ephesians 6 11 as the word method. But this English word is not strong enough to convey the full meaning of the Greek word methodos or methodos. Let me make the meaning of this word very simple for you. The most literal meaning of the word wills Methodos is with a road. I realize that this meaning may initially seem a little strange, but when you connect this meaning to the devil, as Paul does in Ephesians 6 11, it begins to make sense. It means that the devil travels 
on one road, one lane, one path, or one avenue. In other words, he possesses only one approach to you. I realize that many believers think that the devil has all kinds of imaginary ways to find access into their lives. However, the word methodus tells us that the enemy doesn't have a whole bunch of tricks in his bags. He only has one approach or one way to get into a person's life. So let me give you an example of what I mean. If you're going to make or to take a trip, the logical thing for you to do is to get a map, a chart your journey, and chart your journey to your destination. You don't take just only any old road. Rather, you strategize to find the best and fastest way to get where you're going right? It will be pretty foolish for you to jump in the car and take off with no sense of direction. Or, an exception, if what we were really talking about, a trip out of your city and to another destination. It will be pretty foolish for you to jump in the car. And taking any oil road could lead you in a multitude of wrong directions. This is precisely the idea of the word methodos. And as we now are gifted with years of the GPS, and it's now in almost every phone and tablet and in the cars, what a blessing, right? This is precisely the idea of the word methodos. The devil isn't wasting any time. He knows where he wants to go. He has chosen his destination. Instead of messing around on a bunch of different routes, he has mastered the most effective way to get where he wants to go. I believe Paul answers the question about Satan's destination in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11, when he says, We are not ignorant of his, the Satan, devices. Pay careful attention to the word devices in this verse. It is the Greek word pneumata, a form of the word nous, which is the Greek word for the mind or the intellect. Thus, in one sense, Paul is saying, we are not ignorant of Satan's mind, or we are not ignorant of the way Satan schemes and thinks. But the word pneumata also denotes Satan's insidious plot to fill the human minds with confusion. There is no doubt that the mind is the area where Satan feels most comfortable. He knows that if he can access a person's mind and emotions, he will very likely be able to snare and entrap that individual. This Greek word not only depicts Satan's scheming mind, but also his crafty, subtle way of attacking and victimizing others' mind. The word numata can even carry the notion of mind games. This means you could translate the verse, we are not ignorant of Satan's mind games. The devil loves to make a playground out of people's mind and emotions. 
he delights in filling their perceptions and senses with illusions that captivate them, paralyze them, and ultimately, ultimately destroy them. So write the scripture verse also down. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 5. Mark 11.23 is a powerful verse about faith and confession that believers claim and use. But the principle in this verse works for the devil too. The verse says, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say into this mountain, Be you removed, and be you cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he said. So according to Jesus, to what Jesus thought in this verse, you can bring the past whatsoever you say and believe in your heart, for instance. If you believe in your heart that Jesus purchased your healing and you put your heartfelt faith together with the confession of your mouth, you can literally bring that healing into manifestation in your physical body. Creative power is released when the heart and mouth get in agreement. That's why you must be careful about what you believe in your heart and say with your mouth because when your heart and mouth get in sync, it makes things happen. This heart-mouth combination works both positively and and negatively it can bring about the manifestation of healing to your body salvation to your family prosperity to your business and growth to your church but the devil also knows how to use this principle against you <coughs> excuse me he knows that if he can fill your mind and heart with lies that you believe and then coax you to start confess conf confessing those lies with your mouth you make those evil images come to pass. That's the reason the devil wants to fill your mind with deceptive thoughts and to paint his lies so vividly on the move, movie screen of your mind. Jesus said, Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Matthew 12, 34. In other words, whatever is in your heart is eventually going to come out of your mouth. Because great power is released when your heart and mouth start working together. It's extremely important that you put the right things in your heart. When you bring your heart and mouth into agreement with God's word, you are moving into the realm of creative faith. Mark 11:23, write this down, promises that whatever you believe in your heart and say with your mouth will come to pass. But as I said before, this doesn't just apply to Bible promises. It applies to anything. You believe in your heart and say with your mouth. So if the devil can get you to believe and say wrong things, your own heart and mouth will cause those killer confessions to come to pass. I know it's hard to control your mouth sometimes, but when you start to run at the mouth and speak out whatever thought the devil puts in your mind, you're playing with fire. Once the devil has established a stronghold in your mind, it's just a matter of time until you start pulling your emotional strings. He wants to make you an emotional puppet of his own design.
That is another reason why it is so important for you to spend time in the Word of God. As you spend time meditating in the Word, your mind is renewed to God's way of thinking. See Ephesians 4.23, Colossians 3 verse 10. God's Word brings a supernatural cleansing that washes your mind and emotions from the condemnation, contamination of the world. The memories of past bad experiences and the lies the enemies has tried to sow into your brain. When you make it a priority to fill your mind with truth from God's word, you make it difficult for the enemy to penetrate your mind. And if he can't penetrate your mind, he can't touch your emotions either. On the other hand, your own failure to fill your mind with God's word could result in catastrophe as every area of your life is left vulnerable to Satan's assault. A person whose mind is renewed to the word of God is strengthened and undergridded inwardly. He is harder to deceive because his strong foundation of truth repels the enemy's attacks. Many marriages fail because of lies the devil pounds into the minds of one or both spouses. So, and I don't have to go deep in what can go wrong in marriages. You maybe know friends or in your own family. And it's not all only about marriages. It's also about very treasured friendships. And just family members together. So, what does the name of the devil mean? The name devil comes from the Greek word Diabolos, or, yeah, Diabolos. But this Greek word, Diabolos, is much more than a name. It's a job description. It tells you how the devil operates and what he wants to try to achieve in your mind, emotions, and ultimately in every area of your life, including your relationships. The word Diabolos is a compound of the words dia and balo. The word dia means through, as in the sense of someone piercing through something from one side to the other and depicts Satan's ability to pierce or to penetrate. The word balo means to throw, such as in throwing a ball or rock. It describes a fast forward hurling motion. It's the same Greek word used in John 13 verse 2 to describe that moment when the devil swiftly injected a seed of betrayal into Judah's heart. When the word dia and balo are compound, the word diabolos is formed, the New Testament word for the devil. It literally describes one who repeatedly hits something again and again and again until finally that object is so worn down and defeated that it can be pierced and penetrate Daniel 7:25 write it down explicitly tells us that the devil loves to wear out the saints he does this by continually feeding his cunning words of deception to our minds and emotions. His goal is to break down our resistance so he can fill our minds with accusatory assertions about ourselves or someone else and therefore 
if you know you're in a weakened condition, you must be more watchful about thoughts that pass through your mind. When you are weak, tired, and worn out, it's much easier to see things amiss, to hear things wrongly, and to perceive things incorrectly. So often we open the door for the devil and invite him right in by having quarrels and disagreements at moments when we're weak or tired. Sure, problems need to be discussed, but they don't need to be discussed when we're so exhausted that we can't see straight. That's one of the moments when we are perfect prey for the devil's attack. When pessimistic, disapproving, cynical, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> mocking, sarcastic, or disparaging thoughts start to flood your mind about someone, it's best for you to back away from those thoughts for a while and give yourself a break. That string of negative thoughts should be a warning flag. To you that the accuser is trying to wedge his way into your mind and emotions. Spend some time getting quiet before the Lord and allow him to give you his perspective of the situation. When the devil's mental attack begins in your mind it may sound like this. Why do you let those people treat you the way they do? They don't appreciate you. So why do you keep doing all the things you do for them? If it would be better for you to go join another church where you'd be recognized and honored. Stop serving your ungrateful spouse. He or she doesn't deserve someone as kind as giving as you are. And so on and so on. Do you recognize this? I do think so. If you don't turn a deaf ear to what the devil is telling you, it won't be long until those lies begin to sprout and send roots of bitterness deep inside your heart and head. And if you don't allow the Holy Spirit to help you uproot and remove those lies, they'll soon affect your friendships and relationships. So relationships break from the beginning of time. The devil has tried to wedge his way into relationships since the very beginning of time. First he steered up strife between one third of the angels and God. Second he made his way into the Garden of Eden and trying to ruin the relationships with God and man. And third he wedged his way between Cain and Abel, two blood brothers and succeeded in causing mankind's first murder. From beginning to end, the Bible makes it clear that the devil has always been a relationship breaker. Since that is the case, it's imperative that you learn how to protect yourself against his attacks. You see, the enemy wants to steal the fellowship you enjoy with people you love. And kill the sweet friendship you once had. And totally destroy and protect of restoring that relationship. Don't let him do that. Use what you know about how he operates to stand against his wills and deceptions and walk free of bitterness and strife. Now think about it. A lie or false accusations 
is at the root of every offense. In any given situation, the offender or the offended must believe and act on some sort of lie or distortion before an offense can even take place. Sift through the meditations of your heart today. Have you allowed a belief contrary to God's truth to wield its deceptive influence? Has the enemy succeeded in using that lie to distance your heart from God or from others? If you knew a predator of some sort was talking you, studying your habits in order to gain access to your property, you would most likely take specific and aggressive precautions to assure your protection. What precautions do you take on a regular basis to protect your mind, emotions, and relationship from spirits of wicked, wickedness that seeks access to steal, peace, kill effective communication, and destroy unity between you and the people in your life? So I give you a lot to think about, but be active on that. Put on the armor of God. Read Ephesians 6 and the whole line. And you can really dress up like a warrior and stand firm. Everyone has strengths and weaknesses. Has emotions and less of emotions. That depends what kind of a personality you are. But all these things coming in wave when things happened and upset people and there we go so be careful so study through this what I gave you work with it and write things down and make it active may the peace of God be with you and may he strengthen you and may the Holy Spirit guide your heart and mind to walk in faith and in God's word amen bye bye this is your pastor Yeti